So we've been upstaged a little bit by the Supreme Court today uh, on a very vital issue that we knew was going to happen anyways, but it happened today. And now we've got to fight that too. But I think um, these issues have a lot in common, to be honest. And I just want to start by saying, uh, my name is Bill Meyer. I'm from the U.S. Peace Council chapter, Michigan Peace Council. And this event is called the No to NATO uh, Yes to Peace Rally. We're on Woodward, Nine Mile in Ferndale. This is June 24th. And uh, we have a strong bunch of strong supporters here supporting the statement No to NATO. Also across the street, we have many people protesting the Supreme Court decision to uh, reverse Rule versus Wade. Uh, so, first of all, we have to say that uh, this has been sponsored by several groups. Some of them could not be here because they chose to have to go to the other rally. So that's the way it goes. In the meantime, uh, we're going to have a few speakers, and we'd like to have you sort of pay attention to them. We're filming this so we can listen later if you want to. Uh, but we know uh, that the peace movement, the anti-war movement, is in, is in desperate states. Uh, there, there aren't any anti-war rallies. Very rare, very rare. So here's one, and we finally have one, and we got upstaged by the Supreme Court. They, they didn't know. But we're here, and we're the strong ones, and we're going to grow, because we got to get back to where it was, the uh, opposition to war. War anywhere in the world. And that's why our, one of our slogans is, no war anywhere. Okay, so uh, there's been several groups who sponsored this rally. One of them is um, uh, Mike Shane's group. And uh, Mike, did you want to have something to say? Just briefly. Okay, Mike is going to represent his group. Tell us your group, but please say whatever you like. I'm with the Moratorium Now Coalition, but also with an ad hoc committee called Labor Against the War. Um, Labor Against the War is what I want to speak on today. We are opposed to the spending that the U.S. Congress has just authorized to shovel to the, uh, NATO, or to Ukraine actually, and to all the defense contractors to enrich in their uh, profits while the people of the United States suffer. We suffer tremendously. We need the money that is going to the Pentagon and to wars abroad, money that's going to NATO to be spent at home on us. We need water, or we need water improvements, we need housing, we need to basically defund the Pentagon so that the needs of the people in this country can be met. The, uh, the, the failings of the uh, so-called progressive movement in the United States is shameful. Every time the United States wants to launch a war or you launch a proxy war against another country, they first demonize the leadership of that country. They did it again in Ukraine by demonizing Russia. And the American people fell for it like they fell for the demonization of the Syrian government, the demonization of the Libyan government, the demonization of the Serbian government back in the 90s. Don't forget they also demonized the Vietnamese people and the Korean people for those that were around back then. We need to quit falling for this. There hasn't been one just war that the United States has waged since I've been alive and I've been around for almost 70 years. There's, I grew up on army bases, so I know what I'm talking about. They did, there was not one just war. And I'd like to end it at that, that we need to defund the Pentagon, we need to build the water infrastructure, we need to rebuild the schools, we need to have affordable housing in the United States, we need to have affordable medical care for everybody, uh, and we just need to get rid of the Pentagon. I want to keep emphasizing, we say defund the police, let's defund the world police, which is the Pentagon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. <coughs> On behalf of more time now, yes, the anti-war movement. If you're an anti-war activist, that doesn't mean supporting and sending money and weapons to Ukraine. That's not an anti-war position. And the anti-war position is not ignoring the fact that there was a coup in Ukraine in 2014 and the NATO and the U.S. forces instigated an attack on the Russian and Ukrainians in the Donetsk region so, um, and, the, and the Lugansk region. So anti-war activists have to understand that sending weapons is not stopping war. It's causing more war and more death. We're the anti-war movement and we want people to join us. We are against war anywhere. 
and uh, killing against all forms of uh, hatred and violence. Let's beat it if we can. So we got so, a, a gentleman who suffered violence in his life, and he wants to say something. His name's Renee Lickman, and uh, he's going to come and speak. And if anybody else wants to say something on behalf of their organization or personally, just let me know. And you come up. Okay, Russ will be next. So this is Renee Lickman. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for being out here. Um, <clears throat> this reminds me of a long time ago, before the, uh, uh, during the Vietnam War. Uh, I was born before the Second World War, that was a long time ago. And uh, so I experienced fascism in those days, and I distinctly remember growing up that uh, NATO uh, was there, you know, against the war so packed. And you've heard the Warsaw Pact, maybe you've heard of them, but they disbanded when, when the USSR fell apart. And I remember thinking to myself, well, maybe NATO is going to disband because they're, they're just against the Warsaw Pact. But they did not. They did not disband NATO. Now remember, NATO and the USA is the same thing. NATO and US imperialism is the same thing. And NATO has been moving east. And I remember the word containment. They wanted to contain Russia, meaning they just wanted to prevent it from doing any any kind of uh, activities, etc. And it led over the years, since, especially since uh, the, the 220s, to where we are now, where the USSR warned again and again, don't get near us. You know, stay away from us. Remember, we have the Monroe Doctrine, the USA does, where we say no foreign troops in, 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 in the Western Hemisphere. We have that. And they're saying the same thing. Don't put any weapons in Ukraine. And they've been very, very patient over the years. They've had agreements by the U.S. politicians, and those agreements have been uh, broken. And what we're seeing now is U.S. imperialism in practice. It doesn't look like it, but that's what it is. It's U.S. imperialism in practice in the media. We wonder where people get these ideas, which they have. The media, the U.S. media, has been, you know, bought off a long time ago, and they only tell the same story over and over, which is it's Russia's fault, Putin is a dictator, and it's all baloney. It's all baloney. Uh, so the media, unfortunately, and they've, they've kept people out, like Noam Chomsky, for example, or some of these military people that are speaking out now and saying this thing started by NATO, was started by NATO, uh, maybe 10, 20, 30 years ago, little by little, and uh, uh, these people that are critical of what we're doing are not allowed to uh, get on uh, the U.S. media. When was the last time you heard Noam Chomsky, who's a world world public intellectual, respected, all of, one of the most respected people in, in, on the planet, he's not allowed to speak. And that's because our media is very, very biased. I'm gonna leave it at that. Thank you for coming here. I know we're gonna do it again, because U.S. imperialism can't function unless it oppresses other people. It is suppressing people all over the world. But the good news is the USA is downhill. The USA is losing any kind of influence. People don't trust the USA because the USA lies and, and they, 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 they bully people all the time. The USA is not a respected society. And there's other, uh, there's the BRICS. You should look up BRICS, B-R-I-C-S, which are countries around the world, India, uh, uh, South Africa, China, and a number of other countries, Brazil, that are combining together to be an alternative to USA. USA is going to be number two to China pretty soon. So we're going to have to deal with that because, of course, the ruling class of this country is going to blame somebody for that, for being number two. And they, of course, they always have immigrants. I'll leave it at that. Uh, thanks to the organizers. This is great, and we should do it again. And, and uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll get more people. It builds up, you know. Okay, thank you. Thank you, that's Renee Lickman. And uh, I want to let you know that this whole uh, rally, all these rallies started with the World Peace Council. Uh, uh, the rallies against NATO because they fought NATO when it was first established. And now when there's a big uh, summit being set up this weekend in uh, Madrid, NATO is planning to expand their work and create more places for more wars and continue on the U.S. Uh, and uh, uh, NATO hegemony in the world. So um, we also want to mention that 
Uh, we had a, a panel discussion on U, uh, U.S. imperialism, United Against Imperialism. There will be a part two in, on, in August, so some other groups will be at that one also to speak. So keep uh, in touch with the Michigan Peace Council uh, for future activities. Now here's a very respected uh, researcher and author in the city, uh, Russ Ballant, is going to say some few words. Thanks, Bill, and thanks to all the people who helped organize this. Uh, there's a few things that uh, our, our media has been overlooking. When we talk about this being an aggressive U.S. war, I want to make sure that people know that this is something that is not only observable, it's documentable. How many people know that in 2021, the United States State Department issued a joint statement with the Ukrainian government saying that they were preparing military training and capacity so that they could engage in taking territory from Russia. And that comes from a State Department website. I have the documents, I've emailed them out. They did it in August and again in November. So when the Ukrainian government restarted its war against its citizens in the east, how many know about the war of the Ukrainian government in the east? Did you know for six years the Ukrainian government went into Donbass and Luhansk in that area and started shelling and killing them? The United Nations was doing reports on it, but it didn't make it in the American media. The, United, the, the president of Ukraine said, we're going to kill those people that stand out because they said they wanted an autonomous government after the Kiev regime said that they were going to ban their language of Russian language. You can't speak Russian, you can't write Russian, everything has to be pure Ukrainian, whatever that means. That's the historic racialism of the Ukrainian Nazism going back to World War II. So, and those, of, those Ukrainian Nazi leaders which were promoted by the U.S. Embassy, openly supported by the U.S. Embassy, they took key positions in the Ukrainian government in 2014. Those people were running the policy. And they sent it over there. The European Union tried to stop this by, if you look up the Minsk Accords, the U Minsk, M-I-N-S-K, protocols, these are separate uh, documents where they were trying to get the Ukrainian government to stop killing their own people. The United Nations said a year ago, way before Russia went in, that Ukrainian government had killed 14,000 of its own people. This is the Zelensky regime and his predecessors. These are the people that are held up as anti-Nazi freedom fighters. They were mass murderers. Right. And when they went back on February 16th of 2022 and restarted the shelling and the bombing, we're talking about artillery shelling of these citizens. When they restarted again, Russia said the war that they promised they were going to start a year ago, this obviously is the start of the war. So are we going to sit here? What are we going to do? And they debated for eight days. And they finally said, it's, out, it's now or never. It wasn't their imperial designs, even though some people in Russia uh, near Putin said some things like that to try and justify the war. Ultimately, for six years while they were doing it, Russia didn't get involved. These people were fleeing into Russia. They were refugees. And on February 16th, when Ukraine started shelling again, they fed 100,000 of them fled the region to get out. Nobody talks about those refugees. Nobody talks about those refugees. They only talk about the Ukrainian refugees uh, in the Russian context. So the story is much more complicated. Everything that the Ukrainian government has done for, for the last 20 years has been come out of the U.S. Embassy. There is nothing that they do on their own. They are an asset. That's why they weren't really, a lot of Europe didn't want to put them in NATO. They were ranked one of the most corrupt countries in the world by the, the international banking system. They didn't want Ukraine in. 
it was an asset of the U.S. Embassy. And this is the war the United States wants to, doesn't tolerate governments that don't do what they're told anywhere in the world, from Granada to Nicaragua to the liberation movements of Southern Africa and Northern Africa, independence movements in Southeast Asia, that's the first war that I really learned about, was the Vietnam War. We've killed more people in the world in the last 75 years than any other country. Nobody else comes close. We've invaded more countries. We've assassinated more leaders. We've started more proxy wars. Wars that American people haven't even heard of. East Timor. A couple hundred thousand people dead. Guatemala. Nobody's heard about the Guatemala. A quarter million people dead for the U.S. counterinsurgency war. This is the world system that the United States runs. And NATO is its component, its major component, and they use NATO for its Mideast operations. We've really got to do a lot of study, learning, and education, and educating others on the nature of the system. Because democracy is the fraud word used to perpetuate the mass murder that we've been engaging in. I think I spoke a little longer than I intended, but, you know, hey, I dropped everything when I heard this was happening because whenever people are ready to come together to fight this, I'm going to be there. Thank you. Russ Bellant. Of course, this is just a short rally. We just want short comments from people, but Russ has a lot to say for sure. We all do. And we are going to have a program uh, on uniting against imperialism later. I want to just mention that all the groups who help sponsor this event are all very courageous activists. They, they are fighting imperialism. They know what the real problem is. And a lot of them, uh, a lot of them have been harassed. Some of them have been harassed. There's anti-communism, anti-socialism in the country for sure. And we really respect and thank those who came out and those who supported this event also. And we, one of those groups is called the Party of Socialism and Liberation. And we have a representative from that group who wants to say a few words. His name is Theron Combs. Theron. Thank you, Bill. And uh, thanks to all of you for being here, for letting me speak. Um, as he said, I'm Theron Combs from the Party for Socialism and Liberation. Uh, I wanted to speak today about money, about budgets as moral documents. Uh, Dr. King said, you know, a country that spends more on its military than on social services is uh, sprinting towards spiritual destruction. And I think if you believe that, and I do, then you got to believe that the U.S. is on its way to spiritual destruction, right? We sent $40 billion just this year, in excess of $40 billion to Ukraine for weapons, right, to fight Russia. Uh, the Pentagon's budget this year is well in excess of $700 billion. While this, is, uh, while this is happening, we got a homelessness crisis in this country that's on track to get even worse this year. Um, you know, we just cut our aid that we'd had during the pandemic for people who needed to stay in their houses. We've ended the moratorium on evictions. Uh, we've still got this ongoing pandemic with two new variants. Uh, we've got an education crisis in this country. We've got the climate crisis. With all these issues, you would think that you know the government would be a little more concerned with all the stuff that's going on here. But instead, they're concerned, you know, with defeating Russia, with making sure that Russia is put in its place, uh, and as well as China. You know, 2012 under the Obama administration, the Department of Defense changed its orientation away from the war on terror towards a uh, great power conflict, because the U.S. can't uh, it can't stomach having other powers in competition with itself. Right? It needs to be number one. Uh, it needs to be like the only great imperial power. Right? Um, so in this context, I think it's really important that we as socialists, uh, as communists, as activists, are out here to make sure that people know, you know, the real enemy is the ruling class, the real enemy is NATO, is U.S. imperialism, is the Pentagon. Uh, and, you know, it's really not disconnected. I'll be remiss not to mention the Supreme Court decision today, you know, the fact that they've handed down this decision, nine unelected officials, uh, that takes away rights from half the people in this country, and that's violence against working people too, right? And that's also a part of ruling class violence. So we really need to be out here, you know, challenging NATO's violence, challenging U.S. imperialism, challenging the U.S. government's violence in general. Right. Thank you. Thank you. That's Theron Combs from PSL.
And you're right, these issues are similar. We have much in common. We're losing our rights for uh, women to have uh, abortions. We're losing our rights to vote for going into war or not going into war. It's a very similar thing. We're all losing many rights in this country because the U.S. imperialist machine is causing war everywhere and around the world to uh, uh, get as many resources from other countries so that we can sustain our high level of uh, livability in the U.S. So we're going to finish out this uh, rally mentioning that there's going to be a series, a consecutive series of rallies going on starting tomorrow, set up by the World uh, Peace Council. All around the world, there's hundreds of rallies about ending NATO and stopping NATO. Check it out online, no to NATO, uh, dot org, I think is one of the sites. And uh, uh, I forget the name of uh, the No War Coalition in, uh, in, 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 in London. Is having an all-day rallies in all the cities in London, like 50 or 60 of them. So this is a very big worldwide issue right now. The whole world, the majority of the world is against NATO. U.S. and the EU think they represent the world's voice. They don't. They represent roughly 15% of the people in the world. The rest of the people, and even a lot of those, don't want war. They don't want the U.S. to take over. So we're going to finish out with... Anyone else who wants to speak, say something, whether you're with an organization or not, you're welcome to say something. Anybody, just wave your hand. I don't think so, so we're done. That means you can stay as long as you want with your signs and spread the word. We appreciate you all for being here. Thank you so much. No to NATO. Yes to peace. No to NATO.